Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. My name is JJ Purdom, and here with me in the studio is the one and only Scott the Body. Wait, is it Scotty the Body or Scott the Body? Scott the Body Folder. How are we doing, Scott? JJ, what what a great day. You're, you're not going to believe this, but I talked to the president today. And, and the president, we had a great conversation. And he told me that we have one of the best YouTube channels, podcast wow. shows on the internet. And, and he told me, he says, you know what? He goes, you need to get people to like and subscribe because it's that good. Okay, so Scott, you're telling me that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, listens to this show, to this pro wrestling uh -huh. show? Whoa, 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 whoa. Where did you get Joe Biden? No, no, the president, the president of my local farm co-op, Cooter. He's the one that told me that. <laughs> Scott, you're ridiculous, man. You have obviously been smoking some weed. They recently tried to legalize it here in Nebraska, and you're just, you're silly, man. <laughs> Scott, it's great to see you. And Cooter, we're glad that you are listening and watching the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. Uh, also here in the virtual studio is the one and only Money. We call him Money because he literally, it's falling out of his pockets constantly. Charles Money Marquez. How you doing, Charles? Doing great, JJ. Scott, how you doing? Cooter, how you doing as well? <laughs> hey, Scott, I don't, know if, I don't know if you were aware, Scott, but... Charles was present in the news box. Thankfully, we were able to send him to the Battle in the Valley. New Japan Pro Wrestling had an incredible event in San Jose at the Civic Auditorium, 2,500 strong, and thankfully, Suplex's own Charles Marquez was there in person, was able to get quite a bit of footage, and thank you so much, Charles, for being there for posterity, and I know you had an awesome time. Really, there's a couple of standout moments of the night but nobody stands out more than the coming out party for the former Sasha Banks, the New Japan Pro Wrestling in-ring debut of Mercedes Monet. Charles, what was it like to be in the Civic Auditorium with 2,500 rabid, insane wrestling fans, getting an opportunity to see Puro Resu in person and getting to see Mercedes Mar Monet capture the IWGP Women's Championship? Well, JJ and Scott, uh, I would say rabid is probably an understatement. I could not believe my eyes when I got into that uh, auditorium. Uh, I walked in there. These folks were just going crazy. You know, seeing the new Japan ring, knowing that not only Mercedes Monet and Kyrie were going to be wrestling, but of course the living legend himself, Okada, was on the card. Uh, in the main event or the co-main event with Tanahashi. And so was Jay White and Eddie Kingston. Uh, it was unbelievable. Everybody there was so hyped up for the thing. And of course, man, if you haven't seen, I know you guys have, but for our listeners out there, if you haven't really taken a close look at New Japan, go check it out because what they put out is unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Thank you guys. Yeah, incredible in-ring action from all of the footage that has been out there. Of course, most of the footage that's been out there, our very own Charles Marquez is the one who filmed it, and you'll be seeing a lot of his footage out there online, some of it already getting bootlegged. But there were some awesome moments, including Mercedes Monet and Kyrie battling up the ramp and Kyrie putting Mercedes Monet through a table and some have said that might have been a spot that wasn't really necessary as they had an absolutely incredible match. And the match was deemed by most, including Charles, the match of the night. Uh, Scott, I know you saw some of that footage and I know you were a big fan of the women's revolution as Sasha, Bailey, Becky Lynch and Charlotte were really taking off and elevating women in pro wrestling. Are you happy to see her in a different environment? and standing out and able to uh, to really showcase that incredible talent that she possesses. Man, I'll tell you what. First of all, Charles, I'm so glad you're able to go to that show because the videos that you took and the, the messages that you sent us, 
Boy, I, I, I would have loved to have been in that show because it, it looked amazing. But as far as Mercedes Monet, she is a talent. She's a phenomenal talent. She's a generational talent. And New Japan recognizes that. And they made her the second, only the second IWPG woman's champion. And she she just, she, that match with Kyrie was outstanding. It was over the top great. Not for the high spots, not for the, the stunts, but just for the story they told and the wrestling. They have a great person to carry the women's title for New Japan. And I know she's not scheduled to wrestle every single week on New Japan, you know, every other day in New Japan. She has a limited schedule. So it's going to allow her to do some other things. And so we may get to see her in some other areas. I, I know that there's a, there's a show coming up this summer called Forbidden Door with New Japan. You never know what may happen. But yeah, no, Mercedes Monet, tremendous talent. The videos that Charles took, keep up the great work. <laughs> As of right now, Mercedes Monet is currently only contracted for a couple of more events uh, through New Japan. Not that she won't renew that and come up with some more. But as of right now, she has two more matches with New Japan and Stardom that are scheduled. I'd love to see her perform at Forbidden Door and to be able to mix it up with some of that great AEW talent that's out there. It was encouraging to hear that she uh, she did an interview uh, post-match, after the match, and said that she got an incredible text of encouragement from Triple H, as well as a really, really sweet text from William Regal, that they acknowledged her and supported her and wanted her to just do well. And we're just wishing her the best of luck. So Mercedes, we hope to see some more great stuff out of you it was really neat to get to see you happy as you were dancing about and you also paid tribute with that beautiful five star frog splash uh to latino heat eddie guerrero at one point in the match and man that warmed my heart because i know that she was in the crowd when eddie guerrero was announced as passed away she was there to see him so it's just really neat that she's doing something that she's talked about for years and years and uh, I look forward to more great action out of Mercedes, who is now the CEO of the women's division. All the other news that took place over at New Japan's Battle in the Valley that Charles Marquez was able to be there in person for, Jay White was defeated by Eddie Kingston, an AEW superstar, in a Loser Leaves New Japan match. So apparently, his New Japan pro wrestling career is over. Jay White currently... One of those free agents that is probably the hottest thing in the wrestling world right now. Where is he going to end up? He could literally go anywhere. WWE is clamoring for him. First of all, really good looking guy, super talented, great on the microphone. The world is just at this guy's feet. And there he's a main eventer wherever he goes. He does have a history with AEW, having competed with them at last year's Forbidden Door. Where do you guys see Jay White being best utilized? And where do you think he fits in? Scott, let's start with you. I, I don't know if you have a lot of experience watching Jay White's wrestling career, but I know that you've seen some of the highlights for sure. And you know that he's a main event guy. Do you think that AEW is jam-packed with guys they're really not able to use and that he'd be better off going to WWE where there's some room for some stars up at the top? First of all, uh, as much as I'd like to see him in AEW, there's no room for him. There just isn't any room for him in AEW. Now, you take WWE. They have much more TV time available to put him on the TV and let us see him. Jay White is another one of those talents. He built a name in Japan. He's massively over. I just cannot believe that New Japan is letting him go, not writing the check, whatever it may be. But he, you know, he first lost in Japan, loser leaves Japan. Then he fought for New Japan here in the States at San Jose that Charles was at. And it was loser leaves New Japan pro wrestling. And so is he a free agent? 
Is he not? Is it a swerve? I don't know. But if it comes down to, you know, AEW, WWE, Impact, NWA, any of those shows, Ring of Honor, I would, I'm going to have to go with WWE just for the TV time. There, there's no other option because AEW has a wealth of talent at their fingertips. They can't even begin to use even a portion of it to get them over. And whereas WWE has four to five times more TV time. Yeah, that's where I'd go. The only way that I could see AEW making a real play for him and trying to use him up at the top of the card is with the inclusion of Ring of Honor on Ring of Honor television that's going to be beginning soon on the streaming network, The Honor Club. I can see them bringing him in as a focal point of Ring of Honor as Ring of Honor right now doesn't have any stars that are exclusive to Ring of Honor uh, that we know of and that will stand out as Ring of Honor guys. So that's the only place I can see him really fitting in with AEW. I think AEW is overrun with a lot of great talent and it's kind of clogged up right now where they're not really being utilized and used on television. Uh, and I think that there's a lot more room for, hey, we want new, we want uh, what we haven't seen on our television screens on WWE. And like you said, Scott, there is a lot more television out there under the WWE banner. Now, Charles, you actually had the opportunity to be there in person to see Switchblade JY in action and to see that moment as the crowd was thanking him. And this was your first opportunity to see him in the ring, in person. What was your impression? Is this guy a main event player? And will he benefit any company that he ends up going with? Well, I would say that I'm leaning to where you and Scott are both at in terms of where he goes next. I would say probably the WWE. You know, when people know somebody's leaving a company, one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to get buried on their way out the door and it's going to be like, a, hey, this is where like you're going to go somewhere else or it's going to be, you know, some controversial finish or something where you're like, okay, well, they could show up next week on TV because it wasn't. So the way he went out, I would say that it really doesn't lend itself, lend itself to him going on AEW or Ring of Honor or any one of those companies. I think the way they uh, ended the match uh, clearly said to me that he's completely done over here. And I just, his look, you know, he has a very similar look to Seth Rollins, you know, with the long hair, you know, the body. He just kind of has that look. I think that with his mic skills, his in-ring uh, work and everything else, I think the WWE is going to make him into a really big deal. Uh, you know, as we know, he was the IWGP champion. He's been up there on the main tier of these cards. So for him to go to anything less, i.e. Ring of Honor, Impact, NWA, et cetera, that's just completely out of the question. Uh, I, if I were a betting person, I would say that we will next see Jay White on WWE television. Now, depending on when the expiration of his contract is, uh, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if he showed up to uh, WrestleMania. Who knows? But I see him going oh. to WWE. Well, I, we hope that wherever he ends up, that he's on the television screen. And then we're able to watch him because he is a bona fide main eventer. And any company that he ends up with, whether it's WWE, Impact, Ring of Honor, or AEW, he is going to be a top guy because that's that's just who he is. He's an incredible talent. My hat's off to an awesome Japanese career for Switchblade, Jay White. So one of the greatest announcers on color commentary of the last 30 years has been WWE SmackDown announcer, Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee was a former NFL star and, of course, the host of the Pat McAfee Show. Could not be a bigger fan of Pat McAfee. He brought an excitement and an air of fun to SmackDown and to WWE programming that hadn't been seen in a very long time. Uh, Pat recently took some time away as he's awaiting the birth of his child and also went to pursue a little bit of a career with some football, which is, of course, his first love. 
but he was hoping to come back to WWE. He recently made a surprise return at the Royal Rumble, and man, the crowd ate it up tremendously as he was back alongside his broadcast colleague Michael Cole, and uh, and of course Wade Barrett, who or I'm sorry, Corey Corey Graves, who normally is an announcer over on uh, Monday Night Raw. So it was really neat to see Pat McAfee back, and it begged the question, is he back for good? And in the pursuing couple of weeks, the ensuing couple of weeks after that, we saw no no Pat McAfee on our television screens. So it's come to light that right now he's waiting for the birth of his child, and he's contemplating whether or not he's going to be returning to WWE. He says it really depends. He says he loves it, but it really depends on who's going to be buying it. And so that's a scary statement. Uh, it tells me, and I'm sure the rest of my colleagues here, that that there is some fear and some trepidation over who will eventually wrest control of world wrestling entertainment. So, Charles, if you were a betting man, what do you take that to mean? Is he just saying whatever entity takes it over, or is it kind of a pointed dig at a country of origin? Well, who knows? Uh, the the most important thing, though, is that Pat McAfee is outstanding. As you'd mentioned, the response that he got at the Royal Rumble, all the good things he's done since he's been on air. The beautiful thing, and, and I think it's like a broken record, the way we're, we keep every week seemingly talking about the wonderful job that Triple H has done since he's taken over creative. He recognizes these people that are in you know, around, you know, whether it be Logan Paul, whether it be Pat McAfee, he understands, you know, bringing people in, you know, who have their own followings, who are really good, and and helping to enhance their product. I'm sure he's currently in talks with the WWE now working out something so that he can make more appearances, whether it's on a, a permanent thing, whether it's on a, you know, multiple uh, appearance type deal. But uh, everybody recognizes how good Pat McAfee is. And the more we see Pat McAfee on television, that it, it's all good for everybody, for the fans, for everyone else uh, involved. So hope to see more Pat McAfee. Yeah, and Scott, I've actually been there at your house watching SmackDown before. When you're dancing just like McAfee as he's dancing to the Shinsuke Nakamura. Dun, dun, like, and, you know, doing the fingers. So yeah, yeah. And so I know you're a fan of Pat McAfee and how much he has changed the broadcast of WWE announcers since he came in. Tom Hannafan from Impact Wrestling uh, used to work in WWE, Tom Phillips, uh, before he had said that Pat McAfee is so good for the business because he has changed everything about announcing. There's no longer, you know, Vince in the ear giving you verbatim words to say that are archaic and don't fit with the nomenclature with how people speak nowadays. Uh, so, Scott, what do you think? Would you like to see Pat McAfee land permanently in WWE or like what Charles was alluding to a moment ago, do you see him being beneficial if used on a sparing basis, like at a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam? Well, Pat McAfee is a one-man wonder team. He started out as a Pro Bowl punter for the Indianapolis Colts. Then he leaves the Indianapolis Colts basically at the height of his career to become a podcaster. Who would have thought you'd leave millions to become a podcaster? People made fun of him. Now everyone on earth listens to the Pat McAfee show. And it's huge. Then he gets called in and said, hey, can you do WWE on SmackDown? And he changed, he revolutionized the way the matches are called. He's that good. How many, think about this for a minute, how many announcers have their own entrance music? One. It's the only one I know of, Pat McAfee. Then the hardest working man in, in, in the world, as far as I'm concerned, was doing Sports Center on Saturdays. You know, you do the Pat McAfee show Monday through Friday, Sports Center on Saturday. You know, you, you got to take some time off. 
now that Sports Center's over, he's back. He did the Royal Rumble. It was a one-off. But then he's taken some time away from the WWE. He has a baby girl on the way. And I want to read this quote so that I get it correct. He said, baby girl on the way. What's that mean for my future with WWE? I love it. But they're allegedly going to be sold. Who's buying them? Do I want to work or make money for those people? Now, what does that mean? It could mean a lot of things. But when he says it that way, to me, it points in one direction and one direction only. Saudi Arabia. I think he has a concern working for the Saudis who are known for their atrocities against women, people in general, especially women. And that would be bad for the brand. That's what he calls himself, the brand, Pat McAfee. You can't be associated with them if you want to succeed here. And I believe that's what the quote was relating to. I, we may or may not see Pat McAfee back on SmackDown. I please, I hope we do. Pat, if you're listening, go back to SmackDown. But I, I, I don't know if we'll see him again or not. A lot of it's up in the air. Depends on who WWE ends up being sold to. Well, with as many ventures as he has and feet in the door in every other business on earth, maybe Pat McAfee will throw his hat into the ring and, and purchase WWE. But I look forward to the day that I can hear Pat McAfee singing along with Shinsuke Nakamura's entrance and dancing atop the, the uh, announcer's table so that I can go and watch my friend Scott. Uh, as we cheer on our WWE's <laughs> favorite superstars and Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee, good luck with your daughter. It changes your entire life. And uh, and then it also changes your wallet. So just so you know. So in other news, finally here, it comes down to one of the biggest events of 2023 and it's only February. The Elimination Chamber in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, was a jam-packed crowd as Montreal's own Sami Zayn challenged for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship against the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. This was an absolute war. It took them four minutes to lock up as the crowd was absolutely rabid rabid for Sami Zayn and Sami Zayn's hopeful victory in wresting the championship away from someone who had held it for nearly 900 days. And in the end, Roman Reigns still stands tall and walks in to WrestleMania, the undisputed universal champion. Sami Zayn ended up losing in the match at the end, and you could it was like the air got let out of the balloon. Um, I know going into it with the entire buildup, I've been a big fan of the Cody story and everything that's been happening with Cody in the buildup to this. And when this match took place, as it was going on, I changed my opinion partway through the match. And I was like, oh my gosh, you have to go with the crowd right now. The smart move is sometimes you kind of have to give them what they want. Now, WWE, having killed that crowd at the end, it was they, they tried to send everybody home happy by having him get his little comeuppance and kind of stand tall at the end, along with Kevin Owens. And I think that was kind of the right move, to do something like that that was positive. But at the end of the day... Now they're in a pickle. Now they're in a bind. Where do you go with Sami Zayn, who for this brief moment in time is white hot, and you end up going a different direction? Every other time in the history of pro wrestling that somebody has been white hot like that, you always go with them because that's where the crowd is dictating. That's where the crowd is leading you to go. And they didn't do that. Was this Triple H's biggest mistake? Charles, I'm going to start off with you because I know that you, like me, 
felt that at the time before this match took place, that Cody Rhodes was absolutely the right choice for the WrestleMania opponent for Roman Reigns and the championship main event. Have you changed your opinion? Or do you still stand that, hey, I still think the Cody Rhodes place is the way to go and that Sammy will just fall back in the line in the tag team with Kevin Owens? Man, that crowd, that was something else. I, I was amazed. Uh, it was similar, but I think even bigger when uh, Hulk Hogan and The Rock were getting ready to wrestle that unbelievable crowd that was behind Hulk Hogan. But man, this was something different. I don't know that I've seen anything like this. Of course, they were in his hometown, but man, it was like a the conquering hero had returned and they were ready to see this guy go over. And as you said, you know, they tried to do the thing with Kevin Owens at the end, but people were pretty disappointed afterwards. Man, they were singing, they were doing like I've I've just never seen anything like that before. Uh, you know, it's it's you know, being a Monday morning quarterback is easy because you could go back and say, dang, they should have put him over and put the belt on him. But I would say for me at this point, I've I've basically put all the chips in the middle of the table with Triple H. I think he has done an amazing job, you know, up to this point. And I'm sure he's got some tricks up his sleeve between now and WrestleMania. So I'm gonna just say this. I'm going to give Triple H the benefit of the doubt on this one. Although on the surface, we look at it and we're like, uh, this was lightning in a bottle. I'm going to give Triple H the benefit of the doubt. And I think WrestleMania is going to be absolutely amazing. This may be one of the best ones ever. Now, Scott, a uh, little different question, but still on the same basic topic. With, with Sammy not being crowned at this huge event, with his hometown crowd. If you're Triple H, do you make the, the decision to instead of going with the obvious, Kevin Owens and Sammy against the Usos for the tag team championship, do you instead input Sammy into a triple threat with Cody and Roman and go with Sammy at Mania, where it would be an even bigger moment? even though he doesn't have the live crowd with him, but he has that extravagant, huge event to be able to culminate this year-long story of the bloodline. Well, why do you always ask me the hard questions? You know, why don't you give me a softball, easy question once in a while? But, you know, like Charles said, Triple H has hit the nail on the head pretty much 100% of the time since he took over creative and for me to doubt him at this point in the game would be bad, but I do, you know, part of me is just screaming. You've got to give it to Sammy. If you put it on Cody, the crowd could turn. They could riot. There were signs in, in the stadium that said at elimination chamber that said, if Roman wins, we riot. I can see that <laughs> happening at WrestleMania if Cody wins. You almost have to go with a triple threat. It's not something that you would expect at a WrestleMania, but you have to do something. And right now, I think, you know, as much as Cody needs to finish the story, mm -mm, no, you've got to give it to Sammy because he is white hot and you do not want to destroy Cody's you know, baby face run right now. You want to give it to Sammy. It's the only choice you have. And if that means triple threat, I'll go with it. So where do you go with Jay Uso, who has been lurking in the background of this entire storyline and who's been such an integral part alongside Sammy Zayn? He hated him. He was against him and then has had a falling out with the bloodline. Where do either of you gentlemen see Jay Uso fitting into this? Some people have posited a theory that maybe it would be a four-way with Jay Uso involved. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of four-ways, but I know that if anybody can make it work, these four gentlemen can. Charles, what do you think about the possibility of a four-way 
of not only putting in Sammy, but also kind of jamming Jey Uso into this match at Mania? Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I look again as a if I were a betting person, there's he's definitely going to be in the mix somehow or another. As you remember, he was doing the back and forth jawing with mm-hmm. Roman Reigns. Then he got the spear from Sami Zayn the other day. Uh, I look every I, Jay Uso is another star. He's basically there. You know, the, as I've said week after week after week. Triple H has a, an embarrassment of riches at the moment because he's got all of these guys that can carry the company. I could say, I'd say all four of those could all wear the, 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 the world heavyweight championship and people went bat an eye. The four of those guys that Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso and Roman Reigns, all four of them can carry it. I'm telling you the viewership on WrestleMania is going to be unbelievable. I can't wait to see what, the weekly shows have in store, you know, leading up to WrestleMania. I just, I think that Triple H has something up his sleeve and I think people are going to leave WrestleMania in just complete and utter shock. It's great. I I can't wait. I think Charles is right because I personally believe that Roman's time is up at WrestleMania. And I also think that Uso's time as champions is up at WrestleMania I think they're going to put the belts on some different people for a while and let them run. Yeah, time's up for me. Can't wait for it. But you know what? Time is also up for us on this week's edition of the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to follow along in the journey, you can always hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Or if you're listening on the on a podcast app, make sure to subscribe so you get this thing constantly. Please tell a friend. And also go and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suplex City Pod. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at JJ Purdom. Scott, where can they reach you? They can find me on Twitter at Scott underscore Falder. And Charles, where would they hit you up if they were looking for you on the social media sites? Well, they could find me at Charles C. Marquez, and that's on Twitter and Instagram. And we thank each and every one of you guys, and we hope to see you next time right here in the center of the ring.